Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, as you can see in the headline of this article, five U.S. sectors to be affected if BRICS ditches the dollar for a trade. And this was published January 1st of this year, okay, which, um, you know, these BRICS nations are already well on their way to doing that, okay? Um, and more and more nations are starting to see the direction in which, or, or the power shift, okay, and they're actually starting to, to you know, go along with it, okay? A lot of nations are fed up with having to uh, deal with the U.S., okay, because they used, or because the, the dollar is their reserve currency, and so now they're doing something about it. And the, the, the reason why this is important to know is because, as we're going to read in this article, you're going to start to see, just like the headline said, five U.S. sectors that will be affected, and guess what? If you're living here, you're going to be affected heavily, okay? So let's read a little bit of this um, the BRICS Alliance, and really these are the kinds of articles, right, that that average people should be looking into because it gives you like a heads up, right? If you already see the direction that things are headed in, you can already see that this isn't, you know, like some hypothetical chances of this happening is very little situation. This is a very, very real um, possibility. And so you should be looking into this to see, well, wh what does this exactly mean for you? The BRICS alliance is looking to suffocate the U.S. dollar by using local currencies to settle cross-border transactions. BRICS members India, China, Russia, and UAE, I believe that's uh, are the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia, have already started using local currencies for international trade settlements. China and Russia are advancing in convincing other developing countries to follow suit and cut ties with the U.S. dollar. And here's the thing. Here's, here's a, a dose of reality, right? As this push, right, this movement continues and, and, and you start to see more and more countries actually start going along with this, eventually, okay, eventually it'll get to the point where if this continues in this direction, you might have some uh, nations that are a part of either like NATO or um, the the uh, the EU or that are allied with the US that are going to be put in a in a tough predicament to say well yeah we're allied with the US but what are we really getting like if we if we continue to just stay here and hold hands with this place we're going to go down with it okay Clearly, everything is, is moving in this direction, and some of them are going to want to do that. Okay? Now, imagine what that's going to do to their relationship with the U.S. If if they you, you see, like, France or Germany or whatever, some, they, they're like, oh, we're we, we trying to join, <laughs> you know, we're trying to join BRICS because this ain't, this ain't sustainable for us. All right? We got to do what we got to do. Um, anyway... The movement could be devastating to the U.S. economy as America will find it hard to fund its deficit.
So what does this mean exactly for the American people? Well, we're about to find out. If the U.S. fails to import the dollar, the currency will circulate back to the homeland and lead to inflation. Right. So let's think about this. Right. What is inflation? Inflation, um, let's say the scenario where you have uh, too much money chasing few goods. OK, so because of that, it looks like the prices of these goods is, is you know, increasing and is, is going higher. But in actuality, the value of the dollar is going down. Right. Because the, the at least in this world, the more of something you have, the, the, the lower the, the value of it. Right. And that's why when you take like a rock compared to gold, you'll see that a rock is obviously not as valuable in terms of money as gold is or certain other precious metals okay so what happens is when when they stop using like imagine you go to a foreign country right it's kind of like how um today we speak english majority of the world uses english as like the lingua franca so the the, the like the the language of the land the world language so anywhere you go for the most part there's going to be some, you know, there's like this universal language, i.e. English, for example, that they will speak. So even if you go to China and you don't speak Mandarin or, you know, some other tongue and some other location, if you speak English, then you're fine. If you, you can just say, you know what, I speak, I'm from, um, um, I don't know, Uganda or I'm from, you know, India, but I know how to speak English. That's fine. I don't need to learn Chinese to go to China. I don't or Mandarin. I don't need to learn, um, you know, some other language, French to go to France. Like they don't only speak that. If I learn English, I can kind of go anywhere because they're going to be able to speak that. Right. So there's value to learning English. Well, it's kind of like the same thing here. Right. You can say, OK, well, if if um, if I go to China, I don't need to, you know, have uh, 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 I, I can take U.S. dollars to China because they'll deal with that. You know, I can take it to Russia because they'll deal with it. I can take it here because so, they'll deal with it. You know, and I can either if I want, I can, if they deal with it directly, I can do that. Or I can, you know, maybe translate it if I want to into their currency. So now, now that these nations are saying we're ditching the dollar, you would start to have a situation where, once again, going back to the language example, imagine you go to China now and you're trying to speak English and they're like, no, we don't speak English here. But they say it in, in, in their language. Only we only nope, 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 nobody's allowed to speak English here. We only speak China. We, we only speak Mandarin. Now you're like, um, huh, OK, well, that's a problem, <laughs> you know. And, and so if you go, if these nations stop using the dollar, as like this universal currency, they stop accepting it for like even local trade and so on and so forth, international trade. If you go to China with U.S. dollars and they say, we don't accept that, you're going to say, oh, shit, OK, well, <laughs> you know, is there something else you accept? There's always going to be some universal, some currency or some form of of um, money that will be recognized universally. It'll make cross-border international payments much easier because you have a standard that you can you can uh, exchange money according to, right? If one ounce of gold is equal to five rupees, but then it's also one ounce of gold is equal to three, I don't know, yuan. I'm I'm, I'm just throwing some numbers out here, right? With some some abstract currencies, but anyway, some like five rupees is one ounce of gold. Three yuan is one ounce of gold. Well, if you take rupees to China. Your five rupees will be worth three three yuan because you're 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 saying what's the equivalent in terms of gold, right? Okay, that's just an example. So you you need some 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 standard to go across. If that standard is no longer the U.S. dollar, right? Like I said, you would go over there. They'll tell you no, we don't accept that. And then you go to some other country and they say no, we don't accept that. And then more and more countries start to adopt this this policy they dump or ditch the dollar so now it's like saying if we don't accept u.s dollars in here then there's going to be fewer u.s dollars circulating within the chinese economy and eventually it'll be none because 
nobody's going to be using dollars because they don't use it over there. So you're going to start to say, well, what's the point in me having U.S. dollars? I can't use it in China. I can't use it in Russia. I can't use it here. And the more countries adopt that policy, you're going to start to say, well, I'm not going to have dollars anymore. I'm going to start dealing in whatever, you know, a uh, 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 currency or whatever they come up with. Maybe BRICS comes up with their own international currency or some form like that. Then where does all those U.S. dollars go? It comes right back to the one place that it is used, <laughs> right, which is here in the U.S. So when all that money comes back because nobody else wants to use it, now you're going to have an excess of all these dollars over here, and that's what's going to cause the value to go down. You're going you to have too much of it in circulation. And next thing you know, like we're about to read here, it says um, it would lead to inflation. The move could make uh, price could make prices to skyrocket. With housing, rent, and basic daily necessities will turn expensive and unaffordable. Because now your eggs are gonna go from four dollars or five dollars to like twenty five dollars to fifty dollars. You know. Your rent is going to go from 2000 uh, 2300 a month to maybe 4000 5000 6000 What are you going to do? And then that's in uh, Revelation, the sixth chapter, right? It gives you an example of that, of that inflation, which is going to, it's going to, if, if that becomes the case, then you're not dealing with just inflation. You're dealing with hyperinflation. In this article, we will highlight the five American sectors that could be affected if BRICS ditches the U.S. dollar for trade. All right. A total of five U.S. financial sectors could be affected if, let's just say if, BRICS stops using the dollar for international trade. The financial sectors that could begin to decline include banking, foreign exchange, tourism, and production. Below is the five sectors that will be impacted if the U.S. dollar is not used for settlements amongst or among BRICS members. And the thing is, these, these BRICS members are not like nobodies. You got Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, uh, China, Russia, India. Like, this isn't something that's like, oh, these are just, you know, some, some quiet nobodies that, you know, we, we don't really care about. So you have the bank, banking and finance. That's going to be affected. Technology and fintech. Financial technology. That's also going to be affected. International trade and investment. That's going to be affected. And a lot, a good portion of jobs, uh, businesses, companies, and corporations in the U.S. are within these fields. Banking and finance. Technology. Fintech. International trade. Investments. That a lot of, of, of businesses and companies are within this, this uh, sector or these sectors. Consumer goods and retail, travel and tourism. Okay, so that's going to make life hell for people. First and foremost, the banking and financial sector will be will be the hardest hit as foreign exchanges will begin to decline. Secondly, BRICS is looking to create their own internet services and not depend on American technology for news and social media. That's going to also hurt. Thirdly, foreign investors will stay away from the U.S. dollar as the debt crisis and deficit will only worsen. Exactly, because it's already bad as it is. Where do you think it's going to go to if they actually go ahead and do this? In addition, if the U.S. dollar comes back home, the cost of day-to-day -day essentials um, will become further expensive. Finally, tourists will begin to pay local currencies for their travels and leave the U.S. dollar behind. China and Singapore are already making tourists pay in local currencies in their respective countries and not the U.S. dollar. So you go over there, hey, you better, you know what I'm saying, you better pay that joint in, in, in their currencies. In conclusion, BRICS has several schemes up its sleeve that is aimed to hurt the prospects of the U.S. dollar. Moreover, if the Biden administration does not act quickly to counter BRICS, stopping the dollar's decline could become much more harder, really impossible. 
okay? And that's going to be because eventually they're going to need to move away from the dollar. They're going to need to, to, to jump on the new wave of um, digital finance, okay? And that's using digital currencies, digital trade. Like we, we, we did lessons on the, the hub. The uh, bank of was a BIS Bank of International Settlements. I believe they have this project Icebreaker. Like they have these projects in place to um, that that aid in the adoption of digital currencies and the you know international trade and the interoperability between different uh, uh, currencies of different countries, making it seamless and 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 so on and so forth. But also making it much more. Um, restrictive in a way you know because if you don't if you don't go through them you don't get to trade and if you you know if they deem you to be unfit to join that that um system well then you're in a pretty bad place okay but it's going to show you that as these things happen eventually people are going to start to resort to you know whatever desperation leads them to because your job is likely not going to give you a pay boost just to accommodate for this, because if that was the case, they would have been doing that for the current inflation that's that's here now. So a lot of people are going to start to begin, you know, get desperate. And that's when you're going to see some stuff. Now, this is the book of Ezekiel 7 and 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. A good example you can think of is in the movie I Am Legend. I believe there's a scene where he's burning. Let me see. I Am Legend. Um burning us burning dollars scene i think it's i think it's iron legend there's a scene in there where it's just like a there's a like he just sees like all this money but it's not it's worthless right i think he has to he has to um that you can burn it for for, for fire you know or for heat i don't remember if it was iron legend or a different movie but Something was telling me, I think it was I Am Legend. Nevertheless, nevertheless it goes to show you because it was so worthless that they were just burning it, you know, using using dollars that people would kill for nowadays for other means because it's, it's, it's worth nothing. It's just paper at the end of the day. Okay, the value is given in what it means, the meaning that's given to the dollar because the dollar is really a measurement, a measurement of what though, okay? Um, how do you put this? <laughs> if you go to the store, right? If you go to the store and you just tell them, I want one bottle and they give you an empty bottle, that's not going to be of use to you, especially if you're thirsty. You want a bottle of water or a bottle of, you know, a cup of coffee, right? You, you just ask for it. Here it is. You come here in the morning. You're grumpy. You want some coffee. You come in there. Oh, can I get one cup? And they bring you an empty cup. Is that going to do you any good? No, it, it you when you pay, okay, what you're really paying for is the coffee, not not the cup. Who cares about the cup? <laughs> you know, you're not drinking the cup. You're drinking what's in the cup. So if you just want to get a dollar, okay, a dollar is a measurement, but it 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 values in what it's measuring. Okay, one cup is just the cup. Why do you think water, a bottle of water, is cheaper? than maybe like a bottle of expensive wine. They're both bottles, but it's what's what, what they're measuring, right? A bottle of this bougie-ass wine is going to be much more expensive than a bottle of, I don't know, um, what do you call that? What's that thing called? Uh, anyway, a regular bottle of water. Okay, they're both bottles, but what they're measuring is giving them that value. So... Anyway, the point is this this dollar, this paper at the end of the day, because that's what it is, people are going to start to realize it's not really doing much. And that's when, I mean, crime, violence, these things are already bad now. But when you read Second Nature's 15, what does it tell you? They're going to be doing these things because of lack of bread and great tribulation, so hard times. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is a, it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. And see, applying that to today, that's that's pretty much going to be the same effect that's going to be happening to people today. Today, people move as if they can eat money. 
You cannot eat money. You know, they move as though like like just money is just, you know, I mean, it's a defense because of what you can use it for. But the value really isn't in, is in, in the paper itself. You know, it's, it's in what it can do for you. It's a means to an end. But, you know, when it loses that means, then it loses its value altogether. And what they're trying to do here is going to help speed up, you know, the loss of that, that means to an end. Okay, and then, and then what are people going to do? They're going to say, well, I'm hungry or my friend or daughter is sick. And so as where I would have to go and pay for food, this paying isn't going to get me the food anymore. So I'm just going to find another means to get the food. Maybe I'll walk up in there and just take it. Okay, or get the medication. I'm going to walk up in there and I'm going to take it. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying and informative to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha Kodash. And until next time, Shalom.